Satan or Lucifer, but what was his name in, I mean Satan, or the devil, but what was his name in heaven? Lucifer. Right? And his story to me is one of the saddest stories in the Bible, but it's important just to look at um, what he chose. Who would like to start with prayer? Jesus, thank you for today, and thank you that we can be with, and we can be here, and please bless the children's story. Amen. Long ago, before the earth was created, God made all the angels in heaven. There were many kinds of angels, such as, such as cherubim and seraphim, and each of them had a job to do. There was an angel above them all named Lucifer. He was a covering chair beside God's throne, first in rank of all the heavenly angels. He was handsome, intelligent, and majestic, and next to God's son, he was honored above all the others. One day, God announced he was going to make a new world, a new place, where a new kind of creature was to be made in the image of God. Did you ever think about that? There's other worlds out there with other creatures that don't look like us or like God, but they must be beautiful because God made them. Lucifer became jealous because he wanted God to include him in the plans. He had been blessed by God above all the other angels, but he wanted to receive even more honors. He wanted to be as important as Jesus and have the angels worship him as well. At first, he kept his feelings secret and continued to be before God's throne, but in his heart, he was not right with God. Soon, he was asking questions that made the other angels doubt God's goodness. He suggested, Jesus doesn't even care about you. All he wants is your worship. Is that the truth or a lie? He questioned God's rules in heaven. He said, if you have to obey everything Jesus says, you're just a slave. Is that a truth or a lie? Many of the angels began to agree with Lucifer, while others were horrified he would even suggest such things. Finally, God the Father called for a grand assembly of everyone in heaven. God the Son was seated next to his Father, and a host of holy angels were gathered around them. The Father made it very clear that he and the Son are equal because they're both God and have always existed together. He explained that God's laws are designed to help everyone be happy, and they cannot be changed because they are an expression of his character. Lucifer left the presence of God. Now he spoke openly against Jesus. He began his work of deception by painting a picture of God that he knew was not true. Is he still doing the same thing today? Saying things that are not true about God? So how are you going to know what God's really like? Okay, uh, obeying him, but how can we know what we're supposed to really obey? How can we get to know God better? Reading the Bible, spending time with him, prayer, out in nature, and serving others. Yes. Many of the angels pleaded with Lucifer to stop what he was doing. Jesus himself came to Lucifer and tried to reason with him, explaining that rebelling against the Creator would only destroy Lucifer himself. Lucifer would not listen and became all the more rebellious. He accused the loyal angels of being slaves to Jesus and his rules, and he promised them a new and better government in which they would be truly free. Now, does he look any happier there? And that's how we look more being disobedient, right? Lucifer's popularity increased and soon he had great numbers of angels on his side. He became even more bold. He imagined he would have the throne of Jesus as well. All were called before the throne of God once more to have each case decided. Lucifer came with his angels. And this part always gets me, no matter how many times I've read this. How many angels do you think Lucifer was able to deceive? We know one-third because Revelation 12, 4 says his tail took down one-third of the stars. But did you ever, th I never thought about how many that would be, did you? until I was reading this, and it's heartbreaking. Lucifer came with his millions. Isn't that sad? So many that were deceived. But it makes sense. Revelate, or Daniel 7, verse 10. A thousand thousands ministered before him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. So there's more than millions of angels. Lucifer came with his millions and stood defiantly against God. There was no shame on his face as he announced. The only way he would be happy is if he was made equal with Jesus in the heavenly courts. This, of course, will never happen because Jesus is God, and no creature can be equal with the Creator. There was war in heaven. Lucifer hoped to conquer the Son of God, but he was driven from heaven and all his rebellious angels with him. So ended the story of Lucifer's fall from heaven. No longer was he an honored covering chair with the Father's presence. He is now Satan, the Prince of darkness, the Father of lies, the enemy of all that is good. Isn't that a sad, sad story, what he chose? And not only him, but look how many millions of angels lost out. But the good news is that we each have a choice, right? How many of you will choose to follow Jesus with all of your hearts? 
And so, how do we know we're following Jesus? What did we say you can do to know you're following Jesus? Read your Bibles. How many of you read all the way through your Bible from Genesis to Revelation? Okay, Marky has. Can I do some time for a quick math question? My dad's a math person, so quick. If it takes 90 hours for HMS Richard Sr., so he's older and he was reading the Bible out loud, about 60 hours for the average time to listen to the Bible from Genesis to Revelation on CDs. If you were to read an hour a day and it takes 60 hours, how many days would that take you? 60 days. How many months is that? Two, two months. How many months are in a year? 12. Okay, but what if you don't have 60 minutes? You don't have an hour a day. What if you have half of that? You have 30 minutes a day. Now how many days will it take you? How many days will it take you? Double your 60 days, you get 120 days. Double your two months, you get four months. But let's say you don't even have 30 minutes a day. What if you read 15 minutes a day? Now double your 120 and you get 240. Double your four months and you get eight months. Is that still less than a year? Can you see how so many of the great Bible people that really love Jesus have read their Bibles every year all their life through? You can do it, right? So how many of you are going to take that reading Bible challenge? 15 minutes a day. Very good. Lonnie Meloshenko said, this is for your parents and grandparents too, those who read something spiritual out loud, 12 and a half minutes a day, which is really family worship, right? Reverse Alzheimer's. In other words, it'll keep your mind strong forever. I am a call porter. I'm a Bible worker. So I share these Bible story books all around. Who would like to close with, with uh, prayer? Thank <laughs> you. 